Hello friends, Russ Barkley, back again for part three of my video on bipolar disorder and ADHD. In part three, we're going to talk about issues related to the management of these conditions when they coexist. So let me just bring up my PowerPoint and let's get started. This will be a somewhat shorter video because there's less to cover than in parts one and two. Now, when thinking about the treatment impact that bipolar has on cases in which there is also ADHD, one of the biggest concerns that people have is whether or not giving stimulants to someone with bipolar disorder will trigger a manic episode. After all, there is some evidence showing that stimulant abuse among people with bipolar disorder might well lead to some triggering of manic episodes. But is that the case with prescription stimulants that are taken orally as prescribed? Well, maybe, but the evidence for that is incredibly rare and not very convincing. Nevertheless, it is standard practice among my medical colleagues in psychiatry to recommend that one manage the bipolar disorder first. In other words, get the mood and thought problems that go with bipolar disorder, particularly its manic episodes, get those under control with drugs often used to handle bipolar disorder. And then it's okay to add ADHD medications, stimulants or non-stimulants. And there's very little evidence to show that doing so would result in the triggering of mania in these individuals. So previously where people would say, oh no, you never give stimulants to somebody with bipolar disorder. In this case, that appears to be overly cautious and it seems to be okay. Now, do not expect the mania to be as responsive to the drugs often used to handle bipolar disorder when ADHD coexists with it. It's not quite clear why there is a lower response rate, particularly for managing the mania, to these bipolar drugs. But such does seem to be the case in the literature. So just be aware that managing bipolar disorder when there is comorbid ADHD could be more difficult. Now, given that both disorders are present, one often needs to use polypharmacy, multiple medications over the long term to manage both of these relatively persistent conditions. So one may need mood stabilizers, atypical antipsychotics, or even anticonvulsants to help manage the bipolar disorder, none of which are going to do much for the management of ADHD. Hence the recommendation that it's okay to add ADHD medications now into this mix once the bipolar symptoms seem to be well managed. But multiple medications appear to be commonplace when the comorbidity exists. Because of the bipolar disorder, but also the fact that it's even more severe and has a worse course when ADHD coexists with it, it's not uncommon to see that there is a need for periodic hospitalizations, partly for the patient's safety due to their markedly increased risk for suicide, for violence as well, but also for substance use. And also there's often a need for hospitalization in order to help stabilize the patient's bipolar disorder and to be able to titrate their medications properly under supervision to make sure that we have the best combination of medications for them. So where hospitalization is incredibly rare for ADHD, it's more common for bipolar disorder, and especially so for the comorbidity because of the severity of the bipolar symptoms. Now, in the case of children, there's often a need for special educational programs where children have both of these disorders. And that need goes well beyond what might be necessary for managing the ADHD alone. Remember what I said, where bipolar disorder has a childhood onset, ADHD is often comorbid with it and results in a more severe disorder than is seen in either disorder alone. Substance use disorders become much more likely, particularly by adolescence, 
in individuals with bipolar disorder. Yes, they become more common in people with ADHD as well, but there is an especial high probability of a link between bipolar disorder and substance use disorders, even more so than we see in ADHD. And of course, where both disorders coexist, this risk of substance use disorders is markedly higher and requires monitoring and management, particularly through the adolescent and young adult years. Now, as we've said, suicidality is markedly increased when both disorders occur. And in that case, the individual has to be monitored much more closely by family members as well as by treating clinicians in order to detect this possible rise in risk and to deal with it appropriately. Notice that in bipolar disorder cases, 15 to 20 percent of those cases complete suicide, very high rate of suicide, not only attempts, but completions. It's two times more likely when ADHD coexists with bipolar disorder. So this is what I said earlier. When the two disorders occur together, they're often worse and there's a markedly increased risk for suicide. Indeed, the population base rate when there is bipolar disorder, particularly with ADHD, is about 30 times higher than we see in the general population alone. So just some things to think about when it comes to management of bipolar disorder. Now, in the case of children, when it comes to parent training programs for dealing with these very difficult kids, I suggest that you consider an all-reward program that does not involve confrontation with the child, which often happens around disciplinary tactics that are being taught in standard behavioral parent training programs. Focus instead on just the use of the reward programs. Or consider switching over to Ross Green's program, The Explosive Child, as a way of helping parents to cope with the demands of the bipolar child. Interventions for families with children with this comorbidity will need to focus not just on parent training, but on parental coping with the often explosive episodes that go along with bipolar disorder and ADHD. I discussed this earlier under irritability and the propensity for explosive outbursts, destructive behavior, and even violent outbursts in the children who have both disorders. ADHD and bipolar disorder have the highest rates of physical abuse and as a result of PTSD of all ADHD cases. So this comorbidity so distresses caregivers and others that it often leads to eliciting abuse of the child by these caregivers and others. So the clinician needs to be very attentive to the likelihood that there may be some maltreatment that occurs with these comorbid cases. Finally, parents need additional counseling on stress management for themselves and may need to be provided with periodic respite care in dealing with such a difficult child. Well, I hope you found these observations to be useful and this three-part series to be informative on the overlap of ADHD with bipolar disorder. Thanks for joining me for this series. And as always, thanks for being a subscriber to this channel. If you know someone who might benefit from this material, please recommend the channel to others. And as always, live well, be well, and take care. Thank you.